All right. So welcome everyone. This is beginner's yoga and today we're working with shoulders, shoulder blades. Now, this class is on how I learned to do the poses. So maybe this will not be exactly how you've learned it, but this is how I found the yoga practice to be most beneficial and the safest. So just as an introduction, when we talk about the scapulae, the scapulas, <laughs> we're talking about these wings, these boulders there. And that's also why we call them shoulder blades. It's two big blades and they have a different varieties of motion that they can do. It's also important to note that they're two, they're independent, which means that when we have a one-armed position where one arm is up, then one shoulder blade is asked to do something else than the other when we're pulling the other shoulder blade down. Okay, so there's two movements we'll be focusing on today. One is protraction and retraction. In other words, widening and narrowing the shoulder blades in. So widening the shoulder blades apart and then bringing them together, pushing them together. And the other one is elevation and depression. Lifting the shoulder blades and pulling them back down. So at your own time, just find a comfortable position and just try to play with these positions. Don't think of the shoulders so much, think of the shoulder blades, those two big boulders at your back, at your middle to upper back. From there, try to separate the shoulder blades and then try to bring them together. You can even bring the elbows up and push back and feel how there's a slight pinching sensation as you push the shoulder blades together. And then as you bring the elbows away, you widen the shoulder blades. And then you bring them together, press them together, and then again, you widen the shoulder blades. Now push the shoulder blades together and pull them down. Again, there's a, there's a pinching sensation and you might feel the lower part of the shoulder blades pushing in and pressing forward into the rib cage. Now keep the shoulder blades together and lift them up. Together and down, together and up. Down and up. It gives you a slight massage of your back, so it's a funny sensation. Then relax, you can shake it up. And we will now widen the shoulder blades. You can hack opposite shoulders and really hack yourself close to open up the shoulder blades and then pull them down and lift them up. Wide shoulder blades, pull them down and lift them up. Down and up and then relax. Now with neutral shoulder blades again, pull them down, pull them up, pull them down. And then what you want is to, let's bring the elbows out to make it a bit clearer. Bring the left elbow back and then the right elbow forward, but keep facing forward. So now I'm narrowing the left shoulder blade in and I'm widening the right shoulder blade. From here, Keep the left shoulder back and pull the left shoulder down. So now the left shoulder blade is coming in and pushing down and then reach the right arm up. Now the right shoulder blade is wide and lifting up. From here, keep the left shoulder blade in and reach it up also and then reach it down, up and down. And then the right shoulder blade, pull it down, keeping it wide Reach it up, 
pull it down, keeping it wide, reach it up, then narrow it in and bring it down. So shoulder blades are together. Keep your rib cage closed. Keep your belly engaged. Good. And then from here, bring the elbows up and move the left shoulder blade in. Keep the right shoulder blade back. Now keep the chest facing forward. If you turn around, then you're not doing anything. So keep the chest forward. Keep the right shoulder blade pulling in and the left widening. And then from here, pull the right shoulder blade down and reach the left arm up. Now keep the right elbow back and pull the shoulder down to pull the shoulder blade down and keep the left arm wide and reach. Keep reaching up to the right arm down through the right inhale and then exhale just bring the left shoulder blade down but keep it wide then up down and up and then bring it in and pull it down bring the elbow down pull the belly in pick up the chest and relax so this is just an introduction to make you a bit more aware with the movements of the shoulder blades. Now the arms, they are there to help with this protraction and retraction. They're there to help with the elevation and the uh, depression of the scapula. So in yoga, we use um, a chain of actions. In other words, when we bring the arm up, we elevate the scapula, and then we can also depress the scapula, but the idea, again, with the way that I learned it and how I found it to be most efficient as a practice, most uh, demanding and most um, secure for the body, whenever I lift my arms up, I reach away. So when I reach my arms up, the rule is that the arm is up, then there's a, uh, then they we're widening the shoulder blades. And we're finding that external rotation of the arm lifting up. Okay, so arms. So with the arms, there's internal and external rotation. That makes sense. Internal when we bring the arm in, external when we open up the eye of the elbow out. So internal and external. What's complicated is that once we bring the arm up, internal feels like an external, but it's just because it's the same movement. So internal rotation, so see how my elbow is turning in and towards the back even, and then lifting the arm up, this is internal rotation. It looks like external because it looks like I'm turning the, the palm out, but actually, this is the same action of internally rotating and the palm is out. So when you're up, this is external rotation, turning the palm in, and this is internal, turning the palm out, even though it feels weird to say it that way. It helps to see what the shoulder is doing. So here it's an internal rotation, turning the shoulder in, this is external, turning the shoulder out. So when you go up, this is internal because again I'm turning the shoulder in and this is external because I'm turning the shoulder out. Whenever we have the arms down, we find this internal rotation which helps to um, keep the shoulders safe and then we pull the shoulders back to open up the chest. So whenever we have the arms down in yoga, the way that, again, I teach it and I've learned it, we keep the arms in internal rotation and we pull the chest forward, which means that arms are down, scapula is deep pressed, pulling it down, and then we're bringing it together, keeping the chest open. So scapula, the shoulder blades are together and they're deep pressed, and the arms are in this internal rotation. If I open up my, my arms in external rotation, then it, it doesn't feel natural to me, but it is how um, you might be doing it. Now with time, 
opening and closing, always with that external rotation. For me, it, it, it starts to make these weird sounds. And indeed, it's what um, has now changed with this new practice where I bring my arms in internal rotation. And then as soon as I bring them up, I externally rotate. So when the arms are up, what's happened is that we find this external rotation, which looks like an internal, as I said, because I'm turning the palms in. But it's actually external because, as we said, this is external. So external, 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 external rotation. Keep the shoulder blades wide and elevate the scapula. When the arms are up, I'm reaching up through the shoulder blades. I'm widening the shoulder blades and I'm reaching up. Relaxing the head and keep reaching up. Good. So that's all. That's the theory. That's what we're playing with today. We're going to be applying. Um, yeah, we're going to be applying these principles to the different poses, starting with a vinyasa. Okay, so come to your hands and knees. Just play a bit with the protraction and retraction again. So push away into the hands, widen the shoulder blades, and then bring the chest down, bring the shoulder blades together. Again, push away, widen, and then bring the chest down, press the shoulder blades together. One more time, widen, and then press them together. Good. Press and push. Okay, so the other rule that I follow is that when my hands are on the ground or pressing against something or pulling onto something, there's that idea of pushing away strongly, which means that I will widen my shoulder blades here as I'm pushing away. Now, um, when my arms are down, in this case they are down because they're not over the shoulders. So anything from 90 down is uh, considered a position where the arms are under the shoulders. So now they're under the shoulders as they would be here. So when we're under the shoulders, we find this internal rotation of the arm. So find that internal rotation of the arm, which means that the uh, eyes of the armpits, the eyes of the <laughs> elbows are facing in and the armpits are actually widening out. Pressing away to widen the shoulder blades, Feel how this feels. And then we'll push back to a child's pose. As we go back, the arms go over the shoulders, which means that we start widening the shoulder blades and pushing away in this elevation of the scapula. Keep pushing away, keep widening the shoulder blades. From here, inhale and come back up to all fours and turn the eyes of the elbows in and then push away and widen. Okay, bring the arms, bring the chest forward to all fours and then turn the arms in. From here, we'll lower to um, a modified chaturanga position, a modified uh, low push-up. Press down into the hands. Keep the eyes of the elbows facing in and start shifting the weight forward. Keep the elbows over the hands. So you will need to bring the knees further back, pull the belly in, and then keep the elbows in. So this is tricky because I'm asking you to find this internal rotation, which means that it's easy to open up the elbows out. But that's not the pose. The pose is with the elbows at the same line as the uh, shoulders. So we keep the elbows over the wrists, and we start coming forward, elbows over the wrists. Keep that internal rotation. Keep the belly in and then push and come up. So that's the feeling of Chaturanga. Coming forward, keeping the belly in and then pushing and coming up. These shoulders, that internal rotation of the arms, stays for all of the back bends where the arms are under the shoulders because the fact that they're back bends doesn't change the rules that we talked about. So pushing down, we will now come to knees, chest and chin. So keep the elbows over the wrists, press down into the knuckles, pull the belly in, keep the internal rotation of the arms, the elbows over the wrists, bring the chest and the chin down, 
So here, my hands are there under the um, elbows. My arms are in internal rotation, which means that the elbows want to turn out, but I'm keeping the elbows in with my strap, and then I'm pulling the chest forward. Remember, arms under the shoulders means that there's internal rotation and that I'm pulling the shoulders back for that um, action of bringing the shoulder blades together. Now from here, I will pull into a cobra position, keeping everything as is, pulling the belly in, pull with the hands, and just lift the chest forward. So you can do it a low cobra. Here, keeping the elbows in, pull the shoulders back. Remember, this is internal rotation, so I'm not trying to, uh, well, it's not very easy either. I'm not trying to find external rotation. I'm keeping the internal rotation, internally rotating the shoulder. So find the action of internally rotating. And then from there, I'm pulling the shoulders back. Press down, pull the belly in, and come up, and go back to your child's pose. Remember to widen the shoulder base and elevate the scapula. Okay, we'll go a bit faster. Inhale forward, internal rotation of the arms, press away, pull the belly in, and exhale down. Keep the elbows over the wrists, chest and chin to the ground. Inhale, slide forward, keeping the elbows in, the shoulders back, and exhale, push back and widen the shoulder blades. Come forward, keep the shoulder blades wide just because we're pushing away through the hands. And then as you come down, Find that narrowing in, bringing the shoulder blades together. Pull forward, keep the shoulder blades together, internal rotation, and push back, external rotation as the arms go, as the shoulders go over the wrists. One more time, inhale forward, and exhale, pull the belly in, press down into the knuckles. Inhale, slide forward, and exhale, push back. Come to your downward facing dog. Tuck your toes under, lift your hips. Down dog, so this is a position where the arms are over the shoulders. That's clear, um, even though, I mean, if you look at it uh, from spatial dimensions where the hands are under the head, in that, um, in that presumption, then the arms are under the head. But we're just looking anatomically that this down dog is just us with the arms overhead, upside down. So press into the hands and elevate the scapula, widen the shoulder blades. Whenever we have the hands down, we push away. So really push away through the hands, widen the shoulder blades because this is a position with the arms overhead. Elevate the scapula, just like all the position with the arms overhead. Keep that external rotation of the arms, which feels like it's internal. So keep the armpits going towards your head. Press away through the hands. And then from here, inhale to a plank position. Remember, plank position, the hands are under, which means that we are finding that internal rotation of the arms, turning the, the elbows towards one another, pushing away. And then the shoulder blades are wide just because we're pushing away through the hands. And then we start coming down, you will bring your knees down, and, uh, chest and chin, or keep your uh, chaturanga variation, and then inhale, slide forward, internal rotation of the arms, pulling the chest forward, narrow the shoulder blades, and exhale, push. One more time, so you could do cobra or up dog. The difference with up dog is that the hips are not on the ground. Inhale, come to a plank, turn the um, elbows towards one another, Exhale, lower, I'll be right back. Inhale, come forward. Okay. Now, bringing it all into your sun salutation. Come to the front of the mat, pull the balloon and come up. Now from here, you won't, I'll come to the knee just so you can see me. Feet are on the ground, inhale the arms up. You find the external rotation and you reach up because the arms are overhead, just like in down dog. So inhale up, exhale, fold forward. Now, what's happening here? 
is that you are uh, widening the shoulder blades, but because your hands are pulling the ground, you're not pushing away right now, pulling the ground for the forward fold, it means that you are, um, well, no, actually you are elevating this cabinet. Wide and shoulder blades and go down. Well, no, because you are pulling in this one, I'm sorry, you're lifting the shoulder blades up. So that's the only reason, it's because we're having a pulling sensation. And then as you inhale for a half lift, you widen and then come back to standing and we'll do it again. Okay, so let me repeat this one. So when we have the forward fold, what's happening is that we want to come close to our body for the forward fold. In the forward fold, nothing changes. I'll show it from the ground. The arms are overhead. So if I was going to just reach away, I am elevating the scapula and I am widening the shoulder blades, just like we were doing before. So there's that uh, external rotation of the arms. But as soon as I grab onto something, then I am pulling back. Having that pulling sensation is very important because usually in yoga we always push. So pull back. When we pull, it means that we will actually depress the scapula, we'll send the shoulder blades back, but the rest of the rules stay the same. So we widen the shoulder blades and we reach forward through our head while we pull the shoulder blades back, relaxing the traps. So the rest stays the same. The arms are overhead, so there's widening the shoulder blades, we're externally rotating the arms, and we're pulling back, which means that we're depressing the scapula because that's the rule. Let's repeat it from the sun salutation. So pressing the feet down, pull the belly in, inhale the arms up, then there's external rotation of the arms, I'm reaching up, then exhale, come forward. There's still external rotation, and then because I'm pulling, not onto the hands, but onto the ground, there's a depression of the scapula. Widen the shoulder blades because that's the thing that stays, and then inhale, half lift, and here I am pressing away, which means that I am elevating the scapula, widening the shoulder blades, and then exhale, walk back, knees just chin or chaturanga, whatever you do, you have that internal rotation of the arms. Inhale, slide forward, pull the shoulder blades down, internal rotation of the arms, pushing the chest forward, and exhale, push back, downward facing dog, where I'm widening the shoulder blades in this one. Okay, so for down dog, bend your elbows slightly, that will give you some more access to widening the shoulder blades because you want to bring the elbows together. So bringing the elbows together, you widen the shoulder blades, and then push away, keep that action of widening the shoulder blades, and elevate the scapula, reach the shoulders towards the hands. Good, let's come down. Okay, so I know that's a lot of information. You will have to um, maybe repeat this class a few times if you haven't done a lot of um, such things before. If you're more familiar with the yoga practice, then maybe you're already getting all of this very quickly. But it's important information and I wish I knew it from the first day. That's why I want to introduce it to you. Okay, so we've seen how forward folds work. Now we'll work a bit with back bends and with some back bends where the arms are under the ground, under the shoulders, and then we'll do some back bends with the arms over the shoulders. Good, come to your belly, locus pose. Now with the belly down, bring the arms by your sides. Now the arms are under the shoulders. So when the arms are under the shoulders, it means that we find that internal rotation of the arms. So if I'm going to exaggerate, I'm turning the palms out for so this internal rotation, and I'm bringing the shoulders in. Of course, this is um, exaggerating it, but this is the rotation. Then I bring the back of the hands to the ground because that's the pose. And I keep all that internal rotation of the shoulders. But as I said before, we have to bring the shoulder blades together for the arms under the shoulders poses. 
So I'm pulling the shoulders back. Reaching back through the legs, pull the belly in, press down into the feet, and inhale, pick up the chin, the chest. Exhale, stay here. Internal rotation of the arms. Keep pressing the hands down and pull the shoulders back. Four, three breaths. Keep the belly in, the ribs in. Keep the chest open. Pull the shoulder blades together. Four, two. Keep the shoulders going back. Internal rotation of the arms. Shoulder blades together. And one. Exhale, come down. Now bring the arms shoulder width apart. As I said, shoulder height is shoulders, is arms under the shoulders. It would be arms over the shoulders if the arms were anywhere above shoulder height. But now we're still with the rules of arms under the shoulders, which means that from here, we find internal rotation of the arms. So this is internal. I'm turning the eye of the elbow back. I'm pressing down strongly and I'm pulling the shoulders up. Pull the belly in, ribs in. So press the shoulder blades together, but depress the scapula. So shoulder blades in and shoulder blades towards your back. And then lift up for three. You can bring the legs up or not. Pull the belly in, ribs in, open up for two. And remember, internal rotation, pull the shoulders back, shoulder blades together, and pull the shoulder blades down. Press the inner shoulder blades forward. That's the action with the shoulder blades. And exhale, come down. Cobra pose. Same idea. Bring your hands under the shoulders. Elbows in. So remember, internal rotation means that the elbows turn out. But I'm using all the musculature, all the strength to keep the, the, the elbows in line with the shoulders. Because that's the pose. And there's a lot of these um, contrasts. Like I'm working one way and then the other way in the yoga practice. So that's what builds your strength. So press down into the hands. Keep internal rotation of the arms, but pull the shoulders up. And then shoulder blades together, shoulder blades towards the back. Press with the hands, feet together, and inhale, rise up to your cobra. Keep the chest up, the chin up, keep the elbows in. Press the hands down, internal rotation of the shoulders, and pull back. Keep the chest up, four, three, Inner shoulder blades are pressing together and they're even pushing forward. Four, two, lower inner shoulder blades are pressing together and they're even pushing forward. Four, one, and exhale, come down. Good. We're going to um, bow pose, Dhanurasana, and then to Ustrasana, Tamil pose. So arms behind the back, bend the knees. Now here, it's again, it's locus, it's what we did before but we'll just bring the arms up. But find that internal rotation of the arms, which means that the palms want to turn outwards. Internal rotation of the arms, pull the shoulders up, bring the shoulder blades together, pull the shoulder blades back. And then from here, you can stay here, or maybe you grab onto the feet, maybe you use a strap to strap the, the feet around. Now remember, internal rotation and pulling the shoulders up and shoulder blades together and shoulder blades towards the ground because we're depressing the scapula. And then from here, you can use the glutes to lift up, keep the belly working, the chest, four, three, keep lifting up, four, two, shoulder blades together, shoulder blades down, press in your shoulder blades forward, and exhale, come down, it, come to your knees. Last pose with the arms under the shoulders. So hopefully now you see the pattern. Okay, we're going to do it twice. First time, we'll, bring, we'll keep our hands on the waist. Second time, you can again do it with the hands on the waist. So don't worry if you don't want to go deeper today, that's fine. Now we keep the knees slightly wider apart than the hips. That's, a, um, that's something to be um, explained in another video, I guess. But keep the knees apart. Keep the glutes active, pull the belly, the ribs in. And let's focus on the upper body again. So whenever your hands are on the waist, the arms are under the shoulders. Well, when, when we have arms under the shoulders, what did we say? That we have to find internal rotation. So internal rotation would bring the elbows forward because I'm trying to internally rotate. And then I'm pulling the shoulders back, which means that I'm pulling the elbows back. But I'm not doing this. I'm not in external rotation. 
I am in internal rotation, just like supermodels. And then I'm using my strength to pull the elbows back, keep that internal rotation, and open up the chest, keeping that internal rotation of the shoulders. That's a lot of work with your arms. Pull the belly in, pick up the chest. Keeping your arms where they are, inhale, pick up the chest, the chin, and exhale. Pull the shoulders back, keeping the internal rotation. Keep the elbows in. Pull the shoulder blades down, inner shoulder blades in, and press them up. Notice if you've lost the shoulders and find that internal rotation again. So don't allow your shoulders to open up for you to go into something deeper. You want to go into something safe. So internal rotation, elbows in, pull the belly in, pick up the chest, the chin, pull the shoulder blades down, press them together, and reach them up for three. Keep the glutes active for two. Keep the ribs in, open up for one, and inhale, come up. And exhale, come down. Now, you can repeat what we did because what we care about is the shoulders and the shoulder legs. If you want to bring your hands down, then it's the same actions like in bow pose when we grab our feet. If you're going to bring your hands down, tuck your toes so you don't have to go as low. Today is not about back bends, it's about the awareness of the shoulders. Remember, if you don't want to go down, that's fine. But don't go down with one arm and then the other because you'll probably uh, compromise one side. So if you cannot go down with both hands, let's stay with the hands up. So hands on the waist, internal rotation like a supermodel. Then pull the elbows back and keep the shoulders in internal rotation. Keep pulling back to open up the chest. Pull the shoulder blades together. Shoulder blades down, inner shoulder blades forward. Lower inner shoulder blades forward, pick up the chest, the chin, keep pressing the knees, the feet down to keep the core active, the glutes engaged, and maybe you go for the heels. If you grab the heels, again, find that internal rotation, and then push the chest up, and then you can relax the head, pull the shoulder blades together, pull them towards the sit bones, keep the head relaxed, three, four, three, Keep internal rotation of the arms, straight arms, press down into the feet if you're holding them to lift the chest higher, four, two. Keep the shoulder blades in internal rotation and pull them towards the ground to push the chest up, four, one. Keep the belly engaged and inhale, come up slowly, one um, movement at a time, come back and let's finish with the arms over the shoulders. Okay, so as we said, when the arms are over the shoulders, we have external rotation and we reach the arms up. So elevation of the scapula. Keep reaching up and keep widening the shoulder blades. I'm reaching so far up that I'm almost squeezing the, the ears with my arms. So I'm widening, I'm reaching up. And then I'm not squeezing the ears by bringing the shoulder blades together. This is not healthy. So keep the shoulder blades up and keep reaching up. Let's try it in locust. So lie down in locust position and bring your arms forward. Now what you want with the arms is to form fists. You'll form fists and you'll press forward through the wrist, pull back through the fist. Let's open up the feet, mat width distance apart, shoulder width apart. Keep the belly in, the ribs in and Reach the arms forward. Now remember what we're doing with the arms. We're widening the shoulder blades, so the arms want to kiss the ground, and then we're elevating the scapula, so we're reaching the arms forward. Keep the head relaxed. Keep reaching forward through the arms, keep the shoulder blades wide. Pull the belly in, squeeze the glutes, reach our way through the legs, and then inhale, reach up. Keep widening the shoulder blades and keep lifting up through the arms. Four, three, keep the head relaxed. Keep the legs active, four, two, keep reaching away, wide, and I, four, one, exhale, come down. Okay, take a breath. Now just to repeat, when the arms were down, we found internal rotation, and we pull the shoulders up, and we pull the shoulder blades back. When we have the arms forward, what we did was we found external rotation, widening the shoulder blades, and elevating the shoulder blades, reaching away. This is the same like when we were standing up, because when the arms are away, we're really rich, elevating the scapula and completing that chain of movements. Elevation and widening the shoulder blades. 
Now, we will um, go for breach pose and uh, we will go for something like wheel pose. If you haven't tried wheel before, then just watch. We're not really warm enough. If you feel ready to do a wheel pose, then we can do a wheel pose. So lie down in your bridge position and just bring your arms overhead. Widen the shoulder blades and elevate the scapula. That's the action you want. So you want the armpits to turn to face your face. And then you want the armpits to reach away. You want that external rotation of the arms. If you want to bring your arms by your body, find the external rotation because it makes more sense when the arms are down. I'm externally rotating, turning the palms outwards externally, and then reach the arms up. And this is external rotation. Reaching up, pull the belly in and widen the shoulder blades. Good. Now, when you bring your hands in, you'll just have your palms next to your ears. Now here again, you want to find external rotation, which means that the elbows want to come in. Now this is very important because a lot of people, due to um, stiffness in the shoulders, you don't have enough shoulder mobility, you want to open up the elbows when you go to uh, wheel pose. But in wheel pose, we want that external rotation of the arms, which means that the elbows come together. As soon as I press up, my elbows will want to go apart because my shoulders will be um, asked to do a lot. So I have to keep that widening of the shoulder blades and I have to keep elevating, reaching away. Okay, so arms overhead first. Widen the shoulder blades, pull the belly, press the feet down and inhale, lift the hips up, knees away, chest to chin and exhale down. Okay. So with the arms overhead, inhale the hips up, widen the shoulder blades, so shoulder blades apart, elevate the scapula, and then exhale the hips down. Okay, so if you want to go further, hands next to the ears, find that rotation, that external rotation, widen the shoulder blades, press the hands down, pull the belly in, press with the feet, lift the hips, and just bring the hips down. Now the more you press down into the hands, the more you feel the chest popping up, you're using your strength to uh, uh, open up the chest. So press down into the elbows, press down into the hands, press down into the feet, inhale the hips up and maybe bring your head to the ground. Now this will be a lot for some people because this is a beginner's class, but this is a class for everyone. So if you're comfortable here, again, find that wide of the shoulder blades, keeping the elbows close, press down and feel like you're uh, ready to push to find the actual wheel pose. Now, now here, if you want us to watch, um, because my head is supporting, my hands are down, I'm sort of pulling with the hands towards the back. So I'm not yet in that elevation of the scapula. I'm widening the shoulder blades, I'm pushing, and I'm ready to lift up. When I lift up, I want to elevate the scapula. So I want to push away, widen the shoulder blades, and really lift the shoulder blades up. So what's happening when I bring the, the arms up straight is that I keep the shoulder blades wide, I keep the chest open, the chin up, and I reach up. So I'm elevating, I'm widening, and I keep the chest open. I'm really pushing the ground away, which means that I'm elevating the scapula. Okay, so one more time. If you want to go for wheel pose, take it easy and breathe. Maybe you won't be able to focus on these actions today, but we're building a safe practice, which means that we're learning it the right way, and one day at a time, we're getting better at it. So hands by the ears, elbows in, pull the belly in, press down into the feet, keep the, the feet, uh, shoulder, uh, yeah, shoulder width apart or mat width apart, not, not knee distance, not hip distance apart. Open up, feet and keep the knees just in that same line from the hips to the feet. Press into the hands, pull the belly in, push, and then from here, posterior pelvic tilt, we push and we lift up into any variation. Widen the shoulder blades, 
and really reach our way through the arms for three. Keep the belly in, the ribs in. Push our way forward to keep the shoulder blades wide. Elevated internal rotation of the arms. So external rotation of the arms. And come down. External rotation of the arms. Okay, good job. Bring your knees to your chest. Hug your knees. Even here, you can think of, oh, what should my shoulders be doing? Internal rotation and pulling back. Keep the hips close to the uh, heels. Keep the heels close to the hips. Inhale. And exhale through the mouth. Lengthen your lower back. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Reach the left leg out. Right knee in. Bring your right knee to the side. Open up the right arm. Now the arms are still under the um, shoulders, even though they're at the same line, but the rule, arms will do uh, that rotation where we're rotating inwardly, and then we're pulling down. Pull the shoulders towards the ground. Pull the shoulder blades towards the sit bones. Pull the shoulder blades together. Inhale here. And exhale, you can turn your head to the right. Inhale. And exhale. Pull the belly in, bring the knee back to the chest. Switch side, bring the knees together, reach the right leg out, and bring the left knee to the right. Remember, the arms are under, so it doesn't matter if the palms are up. What we want to focus on is the shoulders. So, shoulder, arms in internal rotation, so it's as if your palms are turning down, but we can keep the palms up and keep that internal touch on the shoulders, and then pull the shoulders towards the ground. Pull the shoulder blades together, pull them down, really opening the chest in this twist. Hands on top and breathe for three. Two, keep the shoulder blades coming down. Together, open up the chest. Pull the belly in, inhale back to center. Bring your knees to your chest, hug your knees one more time. Head to knee, pull shoulder blades down, pull the shoulder blades together, internal rotation of the arms. Inhale, and exhale through the mouth. Good job. Okay. Now, just for the fun of it, we're going to do um, one lateral stretch on each side. We'll come to a seated position. So you can use your strength to roll back and forth, or you can use your hands and find your seated position. Now lateral stretches means that one arm is up, the other arm is down, which means that things get complicated. Just sit in a comfortable position, cross-legged, kneeling position. We'll just focus on the upper body again. So pull the shoulders back and keep that internal rotation. Internal rotation, pull the shoulders back. So not external, not this, internal, and then pull the shoulders back in an internal position. Arms in internal, but um, yeah, rotation. Pull the belly in, pick up the back of the head. Now, bring the right hand to your right. Your right arm will stay in that internal rotation. I'll pull the shoulder back. I'll pull the shoulder blade down, and I'll pluck it into the left. So I'm really, pulling the right shoulder blade down and to the left, because that's the rule. If both arms are down, internal rotation, pulling back, pulling down. Keep that, and then what happens with the right arm is that we'll bring it up, so the left shoulder blade will widen and will reach up. Now find that is external rotation. External rotation, up. So reaching the palm towards the back, reach up, and then keep the arm, the right arm in internal rotation, pulling the shoulder back, hand down, and bend the elbow. Of course, you're allowed to bring the elbow in, just have that action happening. And keep the left arm overhead. So right shoulder blade is plucked down and pulling to the left. Left shoulder blade is wide and reaching up. But the trick is that you should keep the chest open so that you keep the left arm, the left side opening. If you 
do this, then you've missed all of the lateral stretch. So that's why we keep that internal rotation, pulling the shoulder back, and then that external rotation, reaching the arm up, but we keep the sternum facing forward so that we reach and we open the whole side. Relax the head, inhale here, and exhale. Again, right shoulder back, right shoulder blade down, right shoulder blade left, and then left shoulder blade wide, reaching up, but keep the left shoulder blade casting a shadow on top of the right. Inhale here, and exhale, pull the belly in and come up. Relax. Other side, going to turn around just so that you can see it from the other side. But now we're lifting um, well, the right arm up. So left hand, internal rotation of the arm, pull the left shoulder blade back, reach the right arm up, external rotation and reaching up. So again, what's happening here is that I'm plucking the shoulder blade down and I'm pulling it in. And what's happening here is that I'm widening the shoulder blade and I'm lifting it up. And I want the chest to stay in that center line. I don't want my chest to form a twist. You can open up a bit more. You can even bring the elbow in. But remember, elbow in does not mean external rotation of the arm, internal rotation of the arm. Pull the shoulder back, plug the shoulder blade down, and reach up through the right arm, widen the shoulder blade, relax the head. Four, three. So keep the right shoulder blade in line with the left, widening, reach it up, keep the left shoulder blade pulling down and plugging it. Four, two. Relax the head and keep reaching away through the fingertips. Feel how the whole side expands when you keep the chest open. Four, one, inhale, come up. And exhale, fold forward. You can extend the legs or you can stay with a cross-legged position and allow yourself to fold. Remember, when the arms are grabbing onto something, you're using that as an opportunity to pull but keep the shoulder blades wide as you plug the shoulder blades down. So normally arms overhead means widen and elevate, but just because we're holding on something and we're pulling, we are depressing the scapula. Hope it's clear by now. Take three breaths. Inhale, halfway. Now when you're halfway up, you're reaching away, widen the shoulder blades, keep the belly in, and exhale. Let's come back. If you'd like to do child's pose, uh, well, <laughs> happy baby pose, or any other pose, then you're welcome to happy baby pose. You're grabbing the feet or the shins when you're lying out with the legs open, and you're reaching the lower back to the ground. Remember, the arms are under the shoulders, so widen the shoulder blades, sorry, so uh, internally rotate the arms and pull the shoulders back so that you open up the chest. So I'm narrowing the shoulder blades, pull the shoulder blades down the back, inhale here, exhale, bring the knees closer to the ground, inhale, and exhale through the mouth. Slowly relax, relax. Shavasana, Shavasana, the arms are under the shoulders. So internal rotation of the arms, pull the belly, press the shoulders down, and plug the shoulder blades down the back. That really lengthens your neck, especially if you give yourself the opportunity to bring the chin. So keep the shoulder blades coming down, in, keep internal rotation of the arms, and then turn the palms up and relax the body. No more thinking, no more doing. Relax and enjoy. Allow your face to be completely relaxed. Allow your breath to be natural. Take the next couple of minutes in complete stillness. 
don't be in a rush to go anywhere with your mind or with your body. By quieting it all down, you allow your body to understand what's been happening, to digest everything. It's all just habit patterns. Everything I've been saying becomes your pattern, your habit. And then you don't have to think about it anymore. It's just at the beginning that you have to stay a bit more active. And once it becomes your habit pattern, then you just need to keep checking back every once in a while, just to stay curious and to make sure that you're not developing any unhealthy patterns, that you're not losing what you've learned. Thank you for the great work today. Stay here just for one more minute. Complete stillness. Relax your eyebrows, relax your jaw, and feel that sense of accomplishment, fulfillment. You did it. Well done. Now relax and enjoy. Very gently. Come back to your breath.
Find a seated position. Bring your hands to your heart center. Keep your arms in internal rotation and pull your shoulders back to open up the chest. Inhale deeply from your root all the way up to the crown of your head. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale deeply. Exhale through the nose, allow the practice to find its place in every cell of your body to integrate. Inhale deeply. And as you exhale, pull your head to your heart. Feel good about this, about who you are, who you've become, everything you're learning and everything you do. Great job today. The love in me honors and celebrates the love in you. Namaste. Good job, everyone. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, always feel free to reach out. You can find my schedule on my uh, website, thesecretyogi.com, and always feedback is very appreciated. So I look forward to hearing from you and I wish you a beautiful day, week, month, life.